Hey, David. A um, couple days ago now when you were talking about your nausea and diarrhea and getting really into the experience, that's an impossibility. I just, that really tickled me on a level I can't really describe, but I wanted to get a little deeper into the experience of that. And like getting way down into the mind, is it, is it the sense that actually everything is love and we've just been confused about in thinking that there is pain because we're believing in separate bodies or is it a complete transcendence of that or how does it is it like a how does that work could you talk on that please yes um divine love has, has just been pushed out of awareness as part of like a giant mind trick and therefore experiences on the surface really don't really have anything to do with anything but they seem very real uh, when you're going through them but I would say that that as you go deeper into spirituality and you clear away the, the, the darkness and you clean the filter you get better and better at seeing love and a call for love and pain is definitely a call for love uh, pain actually it 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 is like this strong calling for what's right beneath it in awareness and the more that you start to see that everything's a decision that your state of mind's a decision when you start to getting into these we'll say upsetting or painful states you know it's like it triggers your mind like ah there's something here for me to really truly see there's something for me to truly find for, to truly experience and and the more that that happens, the more that you train your mind that way, that, that you know, anytime you feel any kind of pain, upset, discomfort, you're really, you're really triggered to start looking for or to experiencing the solution for it. You know, it's not like this typical ego, oh, how did this happen? You know, what do I have to do to get out of this? You know, kind of more of a figuring out mentality that goes on with the pain or just the, the extreme intensity where it's just w wanting some kind of an escapism or distraction from it because it's so, so, so intense. So, um, yeah, I would say that, that that's part of the, the mind training. Sometimes people use the Course as more as kind of a band-aid approach or more of a crisis management, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just going to go along and live my life and live my life seemingly on the surface and then when I get into a, to a crisis, I'll go, go to the Course. But um, anybody who even studies preventative medicine, you know, would say, well, you, you don't want to get into crisis management with, with disease and conflict. You, you want to get into good habits, healthy habits, good, you could say, mental habits, and so forth. You, want to, you truly want to get drawn into the miracle. That's your best... Uh, protection, so to speak, for the mind is to being miracle minded is is the best protection so it's more of of taking a very active approach to that you know how what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom uh, Lord, make me an instrument you know to all the prayers from the saints have always been taking a more of a proactive approach to help me get into alignment with your will. And I know that everything will be taken care of, that I will receive and experience the, the blessings of that. So, that's, that's the key. I think um, whenever there's any kind of an emotional pain, um, instead of just reacting with some kind of a conclusion or some kind of a, a negative judgment, it's like more and more you start to, to really perceive that this is a huge opportunity that you don't want to waste, you don't want to miss, you don't want to, to brush aside, you know, you want to click into that, that correct perception that vanquishes, you know, the, the wrong-minded perception. And then, you know, once you get really good at it, once you really get good at aligning with the Spirit and you're, you're consistently with the Spirit, then you just don't interpret um, you don't have any painful interpretations. They're just like washed out of your out of your filter. So, 
you know, right-minded seeing can see only perfection. Um, when you are in alignment with spirit, you simply have lost the faculty. You've lost the this filter that used to be there for finding error. And it's, that's the most glorious state when you are lifted up into this state where you can't even perceive error anymore. You know, it's an amazing correction of perception. It wouldn't matter what was occurring on the screen. You know, when you're in this glorious, I call it like a vertical interpretation or Holy Spirit interpretation is, is that there is no error. That the errors have all been corrected already in this like vertical perception. So, it's not going to be a sense of finding error and then trying to deal with it, you know, trace it back or do something with it, re-perceive it or something like this. It actually takes you into true forgiveness, which, which literally takes you beyond the possibility of perceiving errors. That's just absolutely amazing. I do remember when I was reading, you know, from Jesus, this italicized line, do not see error. I was just like, just totally amazed, like such a short sentence, but it was italicized, do not see error. And I just was like, you're going to have to show me that one, you know, do not see error. I spent my whole life in this world picking, 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 finding a little wrong with this, a little wrong with that. And then this alignment that he was calling on was, was so high that it literally was beyond the perception of errors. It fits in with what the Course describes as forgiveness. You forgive your your brother for what he has not done. You know, which is a fancy way of saying, you know, that there really is no error there. It was just a misperception, a misinterpretation of, of error, seeing it in form. And that's just a very high goal, but, but as you just go through the mind training, you do start to become grateful for any kind of opportunity that you have to, to see something truly. You know, you want to see everything in a true way. And when you do perceive some kind of pain or upset, then you, you do, you can right away feel the underlying call that's right there, the underlying opportunity. And you zoom in on that quicker and quicker without getting off onto this litany of what went wrong, what's the problem, who caused it, you know. I mean, people have said to me, well, who created the ego? And it actually doesn't have a creator. Uh, it, it wasn't created. Uh, that's why we're learning to expose and release it, because it doesn't have a creator. Uh, you know, in this world we have terms like bastard child or something, but, but talk about this, this thing, this tiny puff of nothingness, wasn't created by God. And if our whole purpose in life is to know God and know the Creator, then we're not going to discover that source within ourselves by studying and analyzing a, a total distractive device, a, a, a puff of nothingness that actually doesn't have a source. So, you know, when Jesus calls the ego a tiny mad idea, it's a sourceless idea. It doesn't have a source. That's why it can't harm you. <laughs> you have a source. I have a source. It doesn't. <laughs> we, we really shouldn't be afraid of something that is sourceless, considering that we do have such a glorious source, you know. So it's, it, it turns the whole world around to, to more to a joke. It is a joke to think that time can come to circumvent eternity, that we can somehow, you know, put something around us that's not of God, that we can actually cloak ourselves in something that doesn't even have a source, it is really insane. And that's why we're, we're here going through this healing process. That's why in the middle of our sessions, I've heard that there have been crying sessions. People will just come together and, and just cry. That's good, you know, it's like just letting up this pain in, in, in a way that you can feel invited to do that, you know. Where are you going to go? You go into a restaurant, oh come on, come over here sir, and, and just cry all that you want, and just 
you know, pour your heart out. You know, it's, you know, in some cases, you know, you pay psychotherapists or counselors, you know, to, to listen, but, you know, if you do a lot of that pouring out of all this intensity, you know, they're, they seem pretty happy when the half an hour is up. They go, oh, sorry, sir, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of that sentence, but time's up, you know. And it's, it's so much of, of thinking you have to pay for that service. You have to pay to let your stuff up and out. It's, it's much more helpful to start to say, Holy Spirit, guide me to the people and the places and the, the circumstances that would be most helpful for me to let it up and out. Uh, and and please don't hold back. <laughs> Just <laughs> sock it to me. You know, give me the most helpful helpful context.